Hi, I'm Dr. Robert Selig and thank you for watching and I've been practicing chiropractic medicine right here in the Wrigleyville Lakeview area of Chicago going on my 15th year. In today's discussion we're talking about peripheral neuropathy. Um, and to address peripheral neuropathy my trinity is based on addressing the patient metabolically, structurally, and neurologically. And that's the trinity that I find addresses all areas of concern when we're dealing with peripheral neuropathy. So let's talk a little bit about peripheral neuropathy. Uh, what is peripheral neuropathy? What causes it? And most importantly, what can be done to restore your peripheral nerves back to health? Um, so peripheral neuropathy, it's a very common disease. It affects over 20 million Americans today. Um, and it's really, it's a breakdown of the communication between brain and the periphery. That usually is your hands or your feet. Um, the brain is just losing its communication. So what does the word peripheral neuropathy mean? Periphery, when we have peripheral vision, it's the outer. So the periphery is the outer nerves, that being the hands and the feet. Um, neuro, of course, meaning our nerves. And patho, meaning pathology. So it's really the breakdown or the miscommunication of the nerves to the end organ, that being your hands or feet. So. What are the 10 signs of peripheral neuropathy that I commonly see? Usually the first thing I see is my patients complaining about a burning sensation in their feet. It could be a, a very intense burning sensation and it's usually progressive. It may start with a light burning going to a real uh, moderate to severe levels of a burning sensation. It could be a tingling, prickly sensation. It could be like insects crawling on your feet and on your skin. Um, sharp electrical pains. It also causes a lot of imbalance. So sometimes when the nerves aren't firing from head, brain to feet, it causes a lot of imbalances. Um, we have a lot of muscle weaknesses. We have uh, a lot of swelling. Um, and also a very common thing is difficulty sleeping. The nerve is keeping the patient up at night and if you don't sleep, you don't heal. And so all these are the common signs and symptoms of peripheral neuropathy. Now, the symptoms depend on really what type of nerve is being affected. It could be a sensory nerve, a uh, motor nerve, or a autonomic nerve. Most of the time it's a combination of all three nerve fibers. It may be more sensory, it may be more motor, it depends on how the nerve is being affected. And that's where my exam will delineate is it more sensory, more motor, more autonomic and again like I said it's usually a combination of all three fibers being affected. Um, so when there's sensation changes to the sensory nerve you interpret that as pain, tingle, tingling sensation, prickly sensation, walking on pins and needles, uh, and again, any of those sensory changes that you perceive. Um, and a lot of it, you know, when we see these movement difficulties, because when we're not getting the right message from brain to foot, that causes a lot of abnormalities in our gait, and that throws off, that leads to disbalance. And here's another very common thing. In the elderly, the most common cause of death in the elderly population is from falls. So when the, when the elderly patient falls, there's going to be a broken bone in the body, and then there's going to be a surgical procedure, and from that surgical procedure, there's going to be some kind of blood clot issues that usually ends up being the more detrimental aspects of the fall. Um, now when we talk about the autonomic nervous system, the main player in this autonomic nervous system is the vagus nerve. The vagus nerve is the wanderer, it's the vagabond, it's the nerve that comes off the brain stem and it wanders down all the way from basically from the beginning of your spinal cord all the way down to your sexual organs. It innervates everything from your lungs, your heart, your kidneys, your liver, all the visceral organs. And usually we understand how structure can really um, 
cut off the flow of the vagus nerve. And that's a big one. So structure always determines function. So as we start to age, the head translates forward on the spine, and that's really going to encroach upon the vagus nerve, leading to every symptom under the sun from uh, gastrointestinal complaints to tachycardia, fast heart rate, slow heart rate, difficulty breathing, but that vagus nerve really has to do with that diaphragm and our breathing and being able to um, relax our body. So this is why as a chiropractor I have to look at structure because structure does determine function. So here's a common thread with all chronic health conditions, whether we're talking about peripheral neuropathy, whether we're talking about diabetes, hyperglycemia, uh, high blood sugar, uh, any chronic disease from our, our neck pains, our back pains, our sciatica, our stenosis, our thyroid, our fibromyalgias, our vertigos, um, irritable bowel syndromes, all of our gastrointestinal syndromes, they all have a common link. Every chronic disease has to be addressed metabolically, neurologically, and structurally. So in the metabolic imbalances, so if we have an anemia, that means we're going to have a lack of oxygen being delivered to the nerve. We know the nerves need oxygen and glucose for it to function properly. So I need to check all the markers of metabolism to see do we have chronic infections, do we have blood sugar issues, um, are our hormones off? You know, whether it's cortisol, whether it's the steroid sex hormones, the estrogens, the progesterones, the testosterones, all this stuff has to be looked at. So I have to run some metabolic panels, panels to get the bigger picture to see what's going on. Neurological imbalances always decrease the frequency of firing, which is going to lead to all our symptoms that we experience of pain, burning, uh, prickly sensations, um, and again, structure determining function. So all chronic health conditions have that common thread of its metabolic, neurological, and structural. So again, my approach to successfully treating peripheral neuropathy is I'm going to address you structurally, metabolically, which is our metabolism, which is our hormones, uh, our blood sugar, our insulin, and neurologically, our central nervous system, which is our brain and spinal cord, and our peripheral nervous system, which is our somatic, soma meaning body, which is sensory and motor fibers, and the visceral part of the peripheral nervous system. And the visceral nervous system is the nervous system that innervates all our visceral organs, every organ from our liver, our kidneys, our heart, our lungs, etc. cetera. Um, now, there's a common link with the metabolism because metabolism is we eat food, we eat an apple, that apple's going to give us sugar, that sugar has to get into the cell, and for that sugar to get into the cell, insulin carries the sugar into the cell, and into the cell that creates what we call the money, the currency, the energy, ATP, adenosine triphosphate. That ATP is the currency that runs every cell in your body. So this is why we must look at metabolism and what affects metabolism. So that ATP comes from the proteins, the carbs, the fats, and it has to go through glycolysis, it has to go through the Krebs cycle, it has to go through the oxidative phosphorylation, through the electron transport chain to produce ATP. And when there's a breakdown in that energy system, then we run into some serious trouble leading to all our chronic diseases. So my question to you, 30% of our energy goes to what system? to what system? Of course you know the answer, it's the nervous system. So our nerves require tons of energy more than any other system in the body. So what are some of the leading causes of peripheral neuropathy? Well we know trauma is one of the causes. We, we, when it's a one nerve, it can be a sciatica, it could be a carpal tunnel syndrome, uh, that could be due to any kind of trauma, but what I commonly see in my practice is 
chronic conditions leading to chronic inflammation of the nerves over time. And so that chronic condition is usually the most common cause of peripheral neuropathies leading to scar tissue formation, which is which in the end encroaches upon the nerve causing our neuropathies. But there's many other causes of uh, peripheral neuropathies. Uh, again, I mentioned the arthritis, the spinal stenosis, the bulging disc, um, diabetes. We've heard of diabetic neuropathy. So this is why blood glucose sugar levels are an integral part of understanding the bigger picture of our neuropathies. Uh, chronic inflammation from food sensitivities to uh, the, the inflammatory foods that set us off into a cascade of inflammation. Uh, hidden infections. This is why I got to run some gut panels to see if we have some hidden infections, which is huge in causing neuropathies. Um, poor omega-3 fatty acids. Uh, fatty acid, your brain and nervous system is fatty acid, so usually there's going to be a deficiency in the right fats, and we're going to have too much of the bad fats. Um, hormones, insulin, um, also, the statin drugs is huge, and I'm going to talk about the statin drugs, how that's a leading cause of peripheral neuropathy. Uh, patients that have survived chemotherapy usually end up with peripheral neuropathies. Um, alcoholism, that's a huge one. Alcoholism leads to uh, vitamin mineral deficiencies, and that's a huge player in causing peripheral neuropathies. And toxins. We live in the age of toxicity, and we're inundated with a zillion, gazillion toxins, and we have to address the toxicity if we're going to get to the root of our peripheral neuropathies. So again, those are some of the leading causes of peripheral neuropathy. Now, I like to talk about the statin drugs. Statin drugs are your cholesterol-lowering drugs. Your body needs cholesterol. Let me make that as clear as day. Cholesterol is the backbone to all your steroid hormones, including your cortisol, your adrenaline, your testosterone, your progesterone, your DHEA. So this, when you inhibit your cholesterol formation by taking these statin drugs, a, you inhibit your hormone function. But more importantly, that cholesterol is the covering of the myelin sheath. That myelin sheath is the outer covering of your nerve. When you start to break down that myelin sheath, communication will be lost. Um, also, those statin drugs inhibit the formation of CoQ10. CoQ10 is one of those amazing... Uh, vitamin slash antioxidants that really nourishes the nerves and the heart. Um, and again, statin drugs are one of the leading causes of peripheral neuropathy. So thank God we have PR labs that gives us Quinol ND, that's a CoQ10, that's a live source of CoQ10, and that can, can significantly help recover cells that are in a low energy tailspin and prevent certain cell death even when their energy level has dropped below their ability to break down the downward spiral using oxidized CoQ10, ubiquinone. This means that Quinol ND can be a major player to overcome low cell energy often seen in runaway neurotransmitter hyperactivity and unchecked free radical production, so often the case in many chronic health con concerns. Quinol ND can also accelerate cellular detoxification of heavy metals and other toxic chemicals. This is just one player we're using in the nutrition part of getting our health back online. Um, again, the steroid hormones, you need that cholesterol to make your pregnolone, your pregnolone to make all your steroid hormones. This is a study from the Neurology Journal from May 2002 that says that statin cholesterol drugs increase the risk of peripheral neuropathy by 16 times. That's a 1600% increase. So is cholesterol really the enemy? We need to revisit this war on cholesterol that we've had and we have to have a better understanding that cholesterol really is needed for brain function, 
for hormone function. Every cell in your body has the phospholipid cell membrane, which is cholesterol. So every trillion cell in your body needs cholesterol. It's not cholesterol that causes the heart attack, it's inflammation. So understanding inflammation is the key. That's the take home message that I want you to get out of this is that inflammation causes the heart attack, it's not cholesterol. Um, damaged low back can contribute to peripheral no neuropathy. We know about the sciatic nerve causing a mononeuropathy or, or again, as I mentioned, the carpal tunnel um, can cause neuropathy. So any of the back or the chronic arthritic uh, osteoporotic conditions are going to lead to degeneration of the spine. And when we break down the spine, you could see all these nerves coming from the spine. When we're talking about that sciatic nerve, when, that, when this starts breaking down in here due to degeneration, osteoporosis, osteopenia, all this inflammation is going to encroach upon the great sciatic nerve, and that's going to cause all of our symptoms of peripheral neuropathy. So we also know diabetes is a main player because that's the blood sugar. Now your blood sugar should always be in a range between 85 to 100. When you're walking around with blood sugar 120, 130, 140, 150, 180, um, that's going to cause a whole cascade of events of inflammation. And again, that inflammation is the hallmark of every disease that we know of today. So glucose is the nerve's energy source, but that glucose has to be in a safe range between 80 to 100. Um, also, chronic inflammation. As I said, uh, chronic inflammation is a major cause of peripheral neuropathy, and this is where I have to look at the liver. The liver is where that fire rises, you know, liver stasis, um, liver heat, because the, everything has to go through the liver. So I will assess liver function when assessing inflammation as well as I will assess the adrenals and the cortisol, because th those are some of the main players in inflammation. And I'll also test the four main markers of inflammation, which is cortisol, C-reactive protein, homocysteine, and uric acid. So this is why we run the blood test, we run the lab test, because we don't want to leave uh, no stone unturned when we're coming to what are the causes of your peripheral neuropathy, if I am to successfully help you treat your neuropathies. Again, common causes of inflammation that contribute to peripheral neuropathy. It's the hidden gut infections. It's the poor omega-3, the fatty acids. It's the high insulin. It's the hormone imbalances, uh, the food sensitivities, the inflammatory foods that we all grew up on. So these are going to be some of the things that we're going to talk about when we're healing your neuropathies. Um, so again, I will run you through a battery of tests to make sure that we're checking all areas of concern when we're dealing with neuropathies. So we will do comprehensive blood work, stool, uh, urine, et cetera, saliva. Now, when you go to your doctor, they, they have their typical lab ranges. When we, when we practice functional medicine, we're dealing with functional lab values. The reason why we're doing with functional lab uh, values because if we're in this gray area, um, which is according to Western medicine, you're in a safe area, you're not abnormally low. But let's say you're here and you're going through a divorce or you've just been fired from your job or you lost your mother or you've had some physical trauma or emotional trauma, this is going to set you into those abnormal high areas even though you may have tested in the gray area. So this is why I go with functional medicine. Um, for example, vitamin D3 normal ranges are anywhere from 30 to 100. If your levels are at 30 nanograms per deciliter, that's barely enough vitamin D to prevent rickets. When we get your numbers up to 50, that's good, but when we start to get your vitamin D levels up to 60, 70, 80, you don't get sick. So this is why I look at the lab markers a little bit differently than Western medicine. I like to know the functional ranges. Um, so what 
when you can't feel your feet, what happens to your brain? Now this is a big issue. This is why I'm so into this peripheral neuropathy. So it's more than just your burning sensation, your pins and needles, your horrible pains that you experience. When your brain is, is not firing properly, this is going to lead to more insidious diseases. Now, this is an article from the Journal of American Physicians. And this, in this article, when, you, when your brain isn't firing and you start to develop peripheral neuropathies, they, through their studies and numerous studies, that the loss of balance, which is going to be the leading cause of falls, which is the leading cause of death in the elderly. But it's also going to be the memory loss, the senility, the dementias, the Alzheimer's, the Parkinson's, the MS. All these things are going to eventually lead to the more insidious brain diseases listed here. Um, the nervous system. The nervous system is communication. You know, so. If our, if our brain and nervous system aren't communicating, there is a major breakdown in all 12 organ systems. So the nervous system being the major player will influence the 11 other organ systems. So this is why we have to look at this nervous system uh, more intensely to get to the root of peripheral neuropathy. Um, now, how does conventional medicine treat peripheral neuropathy? Now, they're going to put you on the anti-convulsant, anti-seizure drugs, Neurotin, Gabapentin, Lyrica. Those are the more common ones that I see. Uh, the antidepressants, the Cymbalta. I see a lot of amitriptyline. And, of course, the narcotics and the anesthetics that just basically they decrease the firing of the nerve. The problem with peripheral neuropathy is the decreased firing of the nerve. So all this conventional medicine treatments really do is put a band-aid on it. They don't get to the root of the problem. So the doctor, the neurologist may send you home with these drugs and the TENS unit and that's it. It's a little bit more complicated and deeper than that if we are to get to the real healing of peripheral neuropathy. So what does a neuron need to revive and repair? It needs fuel. That fuel is, glu is glucose. That glucose has to be in the range from 80 to under 100 and it needs oxygen. That's the fuel that your nerves need. Um, we also can't have inflammation and when we don't have inflammation in the body we're going to have good neurotransmitters because that's how nerves communicate uh, from one nerve to another is all the acetylcholines and the messengers, the neurotransmitters. Um, and to activate the nerves, this is where I come into the play. I am going to help activate your nerves that are sluggish that are being uh, compromised on some levels and so um, I'm one of the first ones in the city of Chicago to use the Hako Med machine. That's a horizontal microcurrent therapy. This is really truly state-of-the-art therapy. It stimulates the nerves electrically to block pain, improve blood flow, stimulate the nerve biochemically to allow for greater metabolism and healing. Uh, reduces inflammation uh, locally. So this HACOMED is one of my key players in treating peripheral neuropathy. There's a hundred different electrical equipment that many docs are using, but again, this is state of the art. This is a $30,000 machine that really is the leading uh, in the industry for peripheral neuropathy. And this will be one of the tools that I will be using when treating your peripheral neuropathy. Um, I'll also... I like to use a lot of the uh, ancient strategies in healing. So we're going to get the best of the scientific world and we're going to get the ancient healing strategies. And traditional Chinese medicine is amazing. It opens up the flow of the energetic fields in the body. So we will use TCM, traditional Chinese medicine, whether we're doing auricular therapy, that's air-based Chinese medicine, whether we're doing regular acupuncture, or one of the forms of TCM we will employ, including reflexology, to really address all the ancient technologies 
of old. So how does auricular therapy work? This is one of the most interesting, fascinating theories in tra traditional Chinese medicine. Your external ear is derived of three embryological tissues, ectoderm, mesoderm, and endoderm. Um, those are the three tissues that differentiate to every organ system in your body. And so in traditional Chinese medicine and auricular therapy, there's reflex points. So when we stimulate the reflex point in the ear, that's going to send the message to the brain, and that brain is going to send its reflex point to, let's say, the feet or to any end organ that I feel needs to be uh, stimulated and to get that energy flowing. Reflexology, amazing. So this is what else we do for nerve reactivation and repair is to stimulate the reflex points on the feet. In one square inch of your foot, there's about 1300 nerve fibers in that one square inch. So we will activate that by using reflexology. Um, so we use the HACOMED, we use reflexology, auricular therapy. We're also going to use vibration and exercise therapy with oxygen. Exercise therapy with oxygen is absolutely amazing. Like we said, your brain needs glucose, your brain needs oxygen. So we're going to incorporate, incorporate that into our treatment protocol. I'll also use the rebuilder therapy. The rebuilder therapy is an interesting electrical device. It sends a current from the nerves in your feet up, up the nerves into your lumbosacral plexus and sends the nerve back down the other foot. foot. So we're recommuting, uh, reconnecting the nervous system to deal with putting out the fire of neuropathy. So the rebuilder therapy, we also can give you a home unit that we will give you so you will have homework to do at home to successfully treat your neuropathy. Um, so the rest of the program includes uh, the things that I mentioned, plus we're going to get into nutrition. we got to quench the free radicals. Those free radicals, what we call oxidative stress. Every chronic disease has oxidative stress. Uh, as part of the inflammatory process. So essential fatty acids, the omega-3 fatty acids, the fish oils, the krill oils, the algae oils, the hemp oils, the borage oils, all these oils help to put out the fire of inflammation. So we will use essential fatty acids, we will use essential fatty acid creams on your feet, um, and this is one of the main players to address the metabolic portion of the neurology um, is addressing the nutrition. So we'll also come in with many other nutritional products, but that's one that's almost a guarantee. Uh, we'll also be using hydrotherapy and detoxification. When we use the rebuilder machine, we're actually going to have the currents into the water, and that's going to repolarize the nerves. We're also going to use um, Detoxification. Now detoxification, if you go to bed at night, before you go to bed at night you eat three cloves of garlic, what's going to smell like garlic in the morning? Your feet. The detoxification happens through the feet, so that's how we save the liver, save the kidneys, save the skin, when we can really start moving those toxins out through the feet. And we're going to use some of the great uh, magma clays. Those are volcanic ash. Those are the zeolites, the fulvic acid, the humic acid. This is some of the most highly electrically charged ions that attach to the positive ions, which usually is the arsenic, the leads, the heavy metals, the pesticides, and that's going to chelate it out the body. We'll, so we're going to use strong detoxification uh, products to help clean up your body. So some of the key points. Um, it takes many different aspects to correct peripheral neuropathy. Some patients may respond better to this. Some may respond better to that. So my goal is to find what you will respond to. So it's, not, it's just not one thing to deal with peripheral neuropathy. This is why I address you structurally, metabolically, and neurologically. So in summary, we're going to do comprehensive blood work to get to the nitty gritty of what are your inflammation markers, how are your hormones, how is your insulin. Uh, we're going to put you on an 
anti-inflammatory diet. We're going to really focus on how to activate the nerve using whether we're doing manual traction, whether we're doing chiropractic adjustments, whether we're using the HACO Med, whether we're using reflexology, hydrotherapy, exercise with oxygen, fatty acid supplementation. Um, now, I usually will, when I do my neurological exam, I'm going to have my patient fill out a neurological assessment form. I'm going to have my patient do a metabolic assessment form. And when I do my neurological test, this is the peripheral neuropathy Toronto exam, where I'm physically going to examine your nervous system, your how your nerves are working. So we're going to check you sensory, motor, we're going to check the reflexes, we're going to check the cranial nerves, we're going to check the cerebellum. So this is going to tell me how your brain is working. So we're going to run you through an extensive uh, neurological exam. So what's next? Now that I've given you the information, what's next is to make your appointment. So on the first appointment, you're going to come in with the paperwork, you're going to have all your forms filled out, we're going to you know, bring in your lab work. I'm going to review your existing lab work. Um, and I would like you to bring your spouse because part of the healing journey is the food part and understanding that if your wife uh, is the cook in the house, she needs to know how we're going to address the nutrition part. And there is going to be some changes as we put you on a anti-inflammatory diet. Um, so after the first visit, I do my exam, I review your lab work, um, and we've, we've gone over all the practical uh, testing information. Then on the second visit, I'm going to review all the information that I found, and we're going to go over a treatment plan, and I'm going to devise a treatment plan that's going to help you successfully treat your peripheral neuropathy. Um, and again, it's always good to bring your spouse and significant other to come in to understand the bigger picture and how this has to be a team effort. Um, so you bring shorts, have all your paperwork filled out, and bring your spouse when you come in. And I usually only accept five peripheral neuropathy patients per month. And usually the first two visits, it's $450. But after watching this presentation, I'm offering uh, the first two visits for $150. Um, now, my rules for accepting you. Now, for me to take you on as a patient, there, you have to meet me halfway. You have to be willing to do the homework. That's going to be the home therapies I'm going to give you. That's going to be the diet. That's going to be commit, your commitment to wanting to get healthy. You need to want to get healthier more than I want you to get healthier. So that's the level of commitment that I'm going to need from you. Um, so on a scale of 1 through 10, I need you to know how serious is your illness. Um, if you know, uh, where do you see yourself in three years? How has it affected your relationship, your work, your ability to enjoy your life? So think of three things you could not do if you didn't have peripheral neuropathy. On a scale of one through ten, how serious are you about eliminating your illness? If you're at a five or less, um, you're not ready for my care. If you're at a six, I can work with that. I can take some of the most uh, uh, pessimistic patients and I can turn them over and get them motivated and inspired to get healthy and usually I'm gonna take the patients that are uh, looking at this scale of 1 through 10 how serious are you about eliminating your illness you gotta be at a 6 or higher preferably 7, 8 or 9 um, and due to time constraints I can really only accept the patients that truly want to get well and are really committed to getting healthy. Um, so that's my presentation on peripheral neuropathy. And please feel free to contact me. You can reach me at, at backtonaturalhealth.com, www.backtonaturalhealth.com, or you can call me at 773-325-2225. And again, thank you for watching this presentation. If you have any questions, please get hold of me and I will help successfully treat your peripheral neuropathy. Thank you again.